Welcome to Dishing It, the daughter and daddy podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm Regan. Daddy daughter Disney travel talk meets fun and friendship. Coming up on episode one of Dishing It, all aboard with listeners' train mail. Where the magic began our first Walt Disney World trip. Top three daughter and daddy pick their top three restaurants in Walt Disney World. Daughter and daddy outside the park. Our special segments, Walt's Wisdom and the Extra Magic Minute. Keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside of the podcast at all times, because your ride is about to embark. Welcome back to Dishing It. I'm Mike. And I'm Regan. March 2020, Regan. We did it. Our very first podcast. What are your thoughts on making this podcast for the listeners? Well, my thoughts is talking more and more about Disney so they can learn more. And hopefully this podcast can make their Disney experience better. That's great, Regan. You know, that's our goal here is to just make Disney a little bit more uh, accessible for people and provide them a little bit more knowledge on what's going on in Disney and how they can, you know, just enjoy the experience uh, from start to finish. Uh, speaking of uh, trains, which Walt loves so much, I hear a train coming into the station right now, Regan. Do we have any mail? We do. Wow, okay, so what kind of mail do we have there, Regan? Oh, so we have a question from the listeners. Oh, that's fantastic. So this is from Emily. She asks, how many times have we been to Walt Disney World? Hmm. You know what? I'm not sure. Um, I know. Oh, you know? Okay. I know. <laughs> Good. How many times have we been to Walt Disney World? We've been to Walt Disney World six times. Yeah, six times. That's quite a lot. Uh, yeah. we, we've been there in the spring, summer. Been there. Uh, winter. Winter, yeah. We've been there during Christmas and we've been there during Halloween. Uh, We've been there for our birthdays. That was a Halloween one. Yeah, the birthdays too. Yeah, and uh, that's, yeah, we've been there a few times. We've also done a few cruises as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're working our way up there on the, um, on getting the lanyards, the different color lanyards. So yeah, yeah, that's a great question from Emily. Thank you very much to Emily for sending in the question. We really appreciate it. And listeners, if you have questions at home, uh, whether they're how many times have we gone, or if you want to know, um, why one park might be better than the other, or maybe crowd times, you know, send off your questions. We'd love to hear from all ages of people and provide them um, an answer. So Regan, it's it's that time again for Disney travel advice. That's sort of the backbone of our show here is to provide some travel advice. So should we begin? Yes. Great. So each episode we will review a specific component of the Disney experience. Uh, this includes everything from the planning stages to the flight home and all the things in between. We will look at parks, lodges, cruises, giving the listener a unique perspective from the parent and the child. Regan, I thought it would uh, I thought we would begin with where the magic began our first trip. Woo! Yeah. So Regan, so I will start uh, it with the boring parent details, and then maybe we can discuss the fun stuff. Sounds good? Yeah. Yeah, good. Okay. So our first trip to Disney was uh, April 21st to 27th in uh, 2013, so a few years ago. We looked at the different tiers of resorts, uh, the value, the modern, and the deluxe, and we ended up booking a deluxe villa standard room in the Animal Kingdom uh, Jumbo Lodge which uh, at the time it actually fell into the moderate category uh, for the resorts uh, rooms. Uh, so this room was actually a D Disney vacation members room that was sold back to Disney. And that sometimes happens from the D Disney vacation comes uh, uh, people. But for us, because we booked in April, we got a 35% off the room rate because it was considered the off season. Uh, Disney has great sales and room rates and meal plans, but uh, that is another podcast. So we got the typical meal plan, which is one quick serve, one table service, and one snack. We looked at different airports and found that the flying out of Buffalo, USA, instead of Toronto, Canada, would save us about eight hundred dollars. So we booked a we booked that, and we when we went to the park, uh, we booked a five day park pass without a park hopper. 
Total cost for us as a family was uh, 5200 US, and that was all in flights, meal, everything included. And one thing for the listeners to know, we are a family of four with two young children between the ages of uh, seven and 10 at the time. Uh, As the planner, I created an Excel chart and planned out our park visits day by day, and I booked our restaurants 180 days in advance around our park days. So we sort of had an itinerary, not too detailed, but at least we knew what park we were going to go to and where we were going to eat each day. Mm -hmm. We had a resort day built into our two weeks, so that was two into our week, so we could enjoy a relaxing day and catch up on sleep because we really didn't know what to expect as parents and we didn't want to uh, be those parents to drag the child around Disney and you know have those tantrums because I think for parents and for kids we, we really want to enjoy Disney right right yeah. Regan yeah Regan's <laughs> laughing because we've been there a few times and we know that sometimes we're trying to pack so much into a day that we lose sight of the fun and parents we want it to be fun for you And do you want it to be fun, Regan? Yeah. Yeah, so we all want it to be fun. So we had a built-in resort day um, where we didn't go to a park and we just uh, decided that it would be great value to hang out at the resort. Uh, So we also booked our fast passes 30 days in advance. So basically we booked everything the day the window would open. Uh, We were all planned and set to go and we thought we were getting great value for our dollar. And we also thought it would be our only trip to Disney World. Boy, were we wrong there, Regan. Yes, we were, Dad. When we've been to Disney World around six times now, Disney really hooked us. Yes, it did. Yeah, and you know what? I just loved it. I, the first time I ever went was with you as an adult, and I just loved it. There's a lot more for us to unpack on the pros and cons of the different resorts in Walt Disney World, but for now, let's focus on our first experience. We were all booked and ready to go. We flew out from Buffalo to Orlando our airport. On We took JetBlue. Uh, that was our airline. And uh, just, just listeners, all our experiences of JetBlue have been fantastic. Um, there's something magical about being on a JetBlue plane that's solely going with Disney people. The people are on the plane are just so happy. And JetBlue was just great in terms of customer service. Uh, We took advantage of the Magical Express, which is Disney's shuttle luggage service. Uh, So with Magical Express, your luggage is taken directly to the resort from the Orlando airport. So basically, we drop our luggage off in the Buffalo airport, and we don't see it again to our resort room. It's fantastic. We don't touch the luggage at all. Upon landing in Orlando, we made our way down to level one of Terminal B to find a slew of Disney people ready to take care of us. They, they uh, signed us up uh, or signed us into their system and led us to a line uh, that was for our bus. And off we went to the resort. We were arrived at the Animal Kingdom Jumbo Lodge and it was breathtaking. Uh, we will post some pictures on Twitter and Facebook for the listeners so they can see. Um, now this is an important part for you listeners at home. M- me, Regan, Grayson and Mrs. H., hop off the bus along with a few other families. As we are looking at this beautiful Animal Kingdom Jumbo Lodge building, this young Disney cast member holding an iPad comes up to us and says, Mr. Holdsworth? Um, yeah, that's me. Come this way, she says, as she walks us into the lodge and the stunning views inside. She leads us to some plush couches and says she will be right back. She comes back within two minutes with our key cards and information about the uh, the resort and Walt Disney World in general. And within 15 minutes of getting off the bus, we are opening the door to our room. Now, Regan, let's talk about the room. The room was amazing. Open that curtain. Oh, there's a giraffe staring at us. That's right. Now, Mrs. H, she loves giraffes, and we booked a standard room view that did not have a savanna view. But when we came in the room and we're checking it out, and Grayson goes to uh, the curtains, and he opens them up, and there, as we all come to the curtains, uh, to the window, there is a live giraffe staring at us. And there's a few off in the distance, and it was just magical. 
there is a giraffe at my window. It was it was just amazing. Yeah, and there's also a couple of giraffes eating off the trees in the background. Yeah, and that's that's just how we got hooked. One, we had um, a cast member who somehow identified our family getting off the bus and addressed us by name and made it very personal. Uh, which, which I, I, because there was multiple families in the same age demographic, I wasn't really sure how she knew it was us, but I guess she took an educated guess, and it was just fantastic. But also that there was this giraffe waiting for us as we opened the curtain. And um, wow, just beyond expectations. Yeah. So, Regan, we planned this trip. We went to Magic Kingdom. Mm -hmm. We went to Animal Kingdom. We went to Hollywood Studios. We did not go to Epcot or the water parks, but we focused on going to Magic Magic Kingdom Kingdom. uh, twice. So what do you remember as your highlights? I remember a lot of things, but I'm just going to limit myself. One of the first rides we went on was the Little Mermaid. Mm -hmm. I was going on the ride with you. And when we turned around, we're going down backwards, and that whoosh of cold air hit us. It really felt like we were going underwater. The music in it, and it actually felt like the story was getting told in a shorter form. Now, Regan, if I, sorry to interrupt, but actually the, the aerial under the sea ride is my favorite ride mm-hmm. uh, there. I just love it, and yeah. I love the whoosh of air that made you feel like you were going on under the water. It's one of my favorite rides there. Yeah, and I also have a memory going on Splash Mountain for the first time. It's a ride that there is a waterfall and you drop down 50 feet into a little thorn cave and you get really wet because it's a water ride and that ride made me love rides. Now, Regan, for the kids at home, uh, was that a scary ride? No, because there's a storyline going the whole entire way through and there's a really fun song at the end. Now... Uh, that ride is about a 10 minute ride in yeah. total from start to finish and you had go up and downs but I, I think Regan highlights on something it's not scary because they're telling a story so for the mums and dads at home uh, for the parents and for the kids it's an, it, it's not like a ride that you would get at an amusement park it's more of a um, experience where it's not about the thrills but it's about telling a story and certainly that ride is one of those where it tells a story. Yeah, and my last highlight is when we went on a small boat going to this island in Disney, and we were walking, we got a map, and there is this huge area that you could climb, crawl, and you guys were standing at the bottom, and me and Grayson Mm -hmm. were going around into the buildings, it was really fun. Yeah, that was fun, and it was nice as parents, because of your age, that we could see you, but we knew you were safe, Yeah, which is great, and you guys had fun. cast members everywhere. Yeah, there's cast members everywhere, and we can talk about some of the special cast members. One of the things is just, uh, for us, speaking of cast members, is we did, um, when we were getting our quick service at one of the restaurants on this trip, is... Mrs. H came up to help me carry the food back, and we left you and Grayson at the table within sight line. Um, when we came back to the table with the food, one of the Disney cast members was sitting with you, and she had provided you uh, Mickey cups and Mickey straws and a Mickey slushy type special drink. And she had them there all ready for you guys, and she said, I hope you don't mind, but uh, I thought I'd get your children something to drink because they looked lovely and were so polite and we we're like oh right so <laughs> it, it, it was great so the cast members uh, are, are really fantastic there do you yeah. have anything else regan no no okay <laughs> i need to limit myself you need to li- yes because we will be we'll have lots of podcasts coming up um so for the listeners we packed a lot in and we still had a rest day midweek Um, So for us, we focus on having fun uh, with an eye to what's going uh, to this being our only trip. Okay, so we didn't plan on coming back multiple times. Uh, We plan on this was probably going to be the one trip with the kids young and then maybe we do one when they're in their late teens. Uh, So we wanted to focus uh, on just having a lot of fun and just try to pack a reasonable amount of, uh, of adventure into our trip. So we planned a bit and we got pictures and autographs from almost everyone. 
in the parks, uh, and I, I just want to put this in perspective. We're there seven days. We're in the parks uh, five days with one day um, just resting at the resort. So in the parks, we met Woody, Jesse, Chip and Dale, Ariel, Rosetta, Tinkerbell, Rapunzel, Aladdin, Jasmine. They were fantastic, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, Sully, Lightning McQueen, Mater, Mr. Smee. Uh, that's when we were exiting Magic Kingdom. He was off to the side there hiding. Uh, Jake, Minnie, and Mickey, of course. In the restaurants, though, that we booked reservations for 180 days in advance, we also met Belle, the Beast, Aurora, Cinderella, Prince Charming, the Stepsisters, uh, the Mice, Eeyore, Tigger, Pooh, Piglet, Donald, Daisy, Goofy, Minnie, and Mickey again. You for- did I forget somebody? No, but I thought you did, but you didn't. I didn't. Okay, that's good. Okay. Well, if I did forget somebody, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so for the parent listeners, with a little advanced planning, you can take advantage of booking restaurants 180 days in advance when the window opens. You can really get added value in meeting those cherished uh, characters. This is this will free up more time for you in the parks, okay? So you can really target uh, um, meeting those special people at the restaurants. And uh, for us, Tusker's House, uh, we saw all the uh, Goofy, Minnie, Mickey, Daisy, Donald, uh, and um, uh, Crystal Palace is where we saw um, Eeyore, Tigger, Pooh, Piglet, and 1900 uh, Park fair is where we saw cinderella prince charming and the stepsisters so you can really uh meet people just based on your restaurant reservation which is great added value yeah so regan any last words uh about our first uh walt disney world trip no i think we're all good yeah, so that's a little snapshot of our first trip. Uh, we didn't unpack in great detail, but for future episodes, we will really look specifically at certain um, aspects of uh, the Disney experience. Great, Regan. Awesome perspective and advice for the uh, parents and the kids that are listening. Uh, my last piece of advice is uh, for the parents is Animal Kingdom Jumbo Lodge is great. We had stayed there again, and uh, we loved the property and their entertainment there. It's one of our favorite places to stay. Now, this resort is one of the farthest resorts from Magic Kingdom. The bus ride is about 30 to 35 minutes door to door. Now, in the spring or fall or even, you know, winter time, the bus ride is great. In the summer, it is not as enjoyable. Also, we found that on summer visits, we like to attend parks um, in the morning and in the afternoon or in the evening. But in the afternoon, we like to maybe come back to the resort and swim and avoid that uh, sweltering heat. So if you're staying at Animal Kingdom Jumbo House, you're losing about 30 minutes one way. And that adds up quickly if you're really trying to maximize your time. So in the middle of summer, if you wanted to go in the morning and in the evening and come back to the resort during the day, you're adding two hours of travel time onto your bus, onto your day. Um, so I just want for parents to keep that in perspective. Now, the Walt Disney World tra- uh, transportation system is fantastic. Buses are very quick. You're no longer, you're, you're only waiting about 10 minutes at a stop at any one time. Um, their, their, their transportation system is so integrated. It's almost like a small city uh, bus system uh, and uh, rail system and, it's, and boat system. It's just fantastic. But we'll get into the transportation system another day. But I just wanted to give uh, the parents uh, just that little piece of advice. Okay, Daddy, enough. We even we could talk about this for days and days. Mm-hmm. Let's move on to our top three Walt Disney World restaurants. Sounds great, Regan. Uh, thanks for uh, stopping me. I could go on and on. So our top three is a little different. We have three standards of excellence. The first star, the second star, and the third star. Let's begin, Regan, on our top three restaurants in Walt Disney World. Why don't you go first, Regan, with our third, your third star? Um, so for my third star, I'm going to go with the Boma in the Animal Kingdom Jumbo Lodge. Yeah, okay. So that's great, Regan. 
Um, the Boma is a great restaurant, and uh, for parents, if they do a little bit of research, it's, it's considered one of the best restaurants in Walt Disney World. Uh, the the food is a f- African theme. Um, it, it, Disney food has a follows a very uh, formulaic pattern of the types of food they provide. Now in Boma, the seasoning is excellent and they sort of deviate a little bit from the common themes in Disney restaurants. And so um, you got the soups are fantastic. The meat selection is great. And for those who love salad, they got an awesome salad section yeah. selection. It's all buffet, but it's one of the best uh, that you can get. Now it is an Animal Kingdom Jumbo house. So you have to go there. And again, if you're not staying at the resort, it's about a 30 minute bus ride from Magic Kingdom to there. Okay, so that's your third star, Regan. Yes. My third star, my third star is Tusker's House. Oh, good choice. Good choice. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Tusker's House is located in Animal Kingdom, the actual park itself. Um, There you can meet uh, Mickey, Minnie, uh, sometimes Donald, uh, Daisy, and Goofy. Goofy's fantastic there. Yes. We've also had a great Canadian waiter our first time there, and his name escapes me. Uh, Mrs. H probably knows, but he was fantastic. The service was great on this trip that we went there. But Tusker's House, great buffet. Love meeting the characters. I also like the theme and, uh, you know, I encourage people to book a reservation. It is a very popular restaurant. So encourage people to book a reservation 180 days in advance. Another thing about the waiter, uh, he followed me when I was getting my food for the first time and I was getting ham and a pickle and I was robbing it. He was like, I never saw that cuisine. You must tell me your secrets. (laughs) He said that to me. I was like, okay. Now he was from Canada and we are from Canada. So I think we had a special bond with him. I think he was from Winnipeg. Yeah. Memory serves me correct. I think he was. Yeah. So Regan, what's your number two star? My number two star is for beer guests to Magic Kingdom because it has two parts to it. One side of the castle is Belle's Place, where everything is beautiful and marvelous, but on the other side is the beast area. It's all dark. The rose is in the back room in front of the window. On the wall is the painting of the beast, but when it thunders, he turns into a human. And at at this restaurant, so again, another restaurant we booked a reservation for, we met the beast. So we had a a picture with the beast who was pretty tall. I think he was eight feet tall. Um, I love the beast. Now, when we went... Um, so this is in 2013, we ordered one of the Disney Easter eggs at the time. So the gray stuff you could order, it wasn't on any menu, but they would make the gray stuff for you for dessert. Um, it's now part of the meal there. So it's not an Easter egg anymore, but at the time we went, it was considered an Easter egg. I loved being inside the castle. The restaurant was fantastic. The food was good. And I loved uh, just the atmosphere there. I remember we were taking pictures of the rose in the back. And if you look at the picture, I was absolutely terrified. <laughs> I was like, oh. I was terrified of the um, the rose because in the back it was thunderstorming. Yep. So it scared me. But on the other side in the Bell's Place, it is um, snowing and there's a garden. So if if for the kids at home, if... You don't have to be scared. Do you have to be scared? Go no. On. No, no. Is the, was the beast nice? Yes, he was yeah, very nice. Yeah, the beast nice. was pretty nice. And you could always request to stay in the room that doesn't have the rose, right? Bell's area. Yeah, Bell's area. So that's your number two, Regan. Yes. My number two, my num- my second star restaurant is the beer garden. Oh, good choice. Yeah, good choice. Now, this one is in Epcot. And uh, it's a German cuisine, and they actually play some music there. And the uh, musicians that play the music are fantastic. I find the food good, but just the atmosphere there, it's, it's like you're at a beer garden, and it's just fantastic. And uh, it's, we've been there a few times, and it's one of my favorite restaurants to go to because the atmosphere. It's amazing. Do you like the beer garden? Yes, it had good food. Yeah, it had good food. Yeah. And I'm always good for, you know, having an, uh, the schnitzel and the potatoes are fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Anyways, great place. So, Regan, what is your first star? So, my first star is going to be Pico Bill. So, really? Yeah. There's nothing special to it, but I just love the place. 
Okay, so uh, for, so for the listeners, where can they find Pecos Bill? So it's in Magic Kingdom, pretty close to Splash Mountain. Mm-hmm. There's a so if you're at Splash Mountain, if you're looking at it, go to your left and then go left again. And if you walk straight, there's going to be a lot of restaurants, mm-hmm. and Pico Bill is one of them. And it has like a salad bar inside of it, and then it has a nice seating area. Yeah. So for the uh, parents at home, uh, Pecos Bill is one of the more popular uh, quick serves. Now, the seating areas fill up very quickly, but they have lots of seats. But they ask uh, um, uh, guests to not reserve a seat. So they want to keep people moving through that place. Now, from a quick serve point of view, it's one of the few restaurants in all of Walt Disney World where they have an open sort of uh, salad bar. So you can address, you can you know you can uh, put stuff on your tacos, your fajitas, or your burgers there. But you can also make a small salad too. So there's some added value, and that's why it's so popular. Is it gives um, the patrons an opportunity to actually um, make the meal a little bit more special. So it, it's one of my favorites too, because I'm sucker for any type of like southern mexican food so i like it too but i'm shocked that was your number one but good choice (laughs) good choice okay so my number one my first star uh which i think is mrs h's as well if she was on the podcast is 1900 park fair now this restaurant is located um uh in the grand floridian resort so it's right off the monorail um, the first stop on the monorail, uh, and um, it's on the second floor of 1900, or of the uh, second floor of Grand Floridian. It's fantastic. I love the pumpkin ravioli there. It's just amazing. Now, if you're booking an evening dinner there, you're going to have an opportunity to see Cinderella, Prince Charming, and the stepsisters. The stepsisters are, I think, one of the more coveted um cast member positions for the parents as these three get to deviate from the script of being uh, maybe polite and nice and they get to be a little bit more um, abrupt and just maybe a little I don't want to say rude that's not what they're going for but just um, they clearly play the roles very well of being disgruntled stepsisters and the if you get lucky we've been there a few times you get lucky there's some really fantastic entertainment that happens for the parents now another added thing that's great there is that the food goes for a really healthy theme and so if you're uh, somebody who likes more healthy type foods or the salads or just fresh type foods and getting away from the fried things this is a place you want to book a reservation at this is very popular again books up very quickly so you want to do it 180 days in advance but by and large i love the pumpkin ravioli i tried to get the (laughs) recipe they wouldn't give it to me and And, also well i asked prince charming maybe that wasn't the person to ask but he wouldn't give it to me you should ask cinderella i should ask cinderella yes yes and also sometimes at the back of the building you can meet prince charming and cinderella in the back of it, it, behind like a castle painting wall, and also there's the godmother. Yeah, that's true. I forgot about the godmother. Yeah. So, yeah, you can get your picture taken, um, and then you can use your photo pass, which stores all your Disney pictures, and you could purchase it if you chose to. But, of course, you can take your own pictures, and you can, of course, uh, bring an autograph book there. Yeah. So, good. That's our top three. High five. Yeah. Okay, Regan. It's time now for our next segment, the daddy and daughter outside the park. So, you know, Regan, what's going on? So there's the coronavirus. The coronavirus, yes. So we're about 30 minutes into our podcast and we're going to talk about the coronavirus for a few minutes. Um, So for those listening, we're not going to get too deep into it, but obviously we're home here and uh, like many throughout the world, uh, we're in self-isolation, um, just staying at home with the family and trying to avoid contact going outside. Um, what are your thoughts on all this, Regan? Uh, uh, I, I mean, 
it's fun, but it's not really because I'd rather go to school than just be sitting at home all day. Right, so it's fun being at home, right? Like yeah. then that's then you get to, you know, read or have a few minutes on the tablet or watch TV or play games. We're playing a game every night, right? Yeah. So which is great, and uh, you know what? So for you, you'll be getting schoolwork next week, I think. Yes. So your teachers are planning that. And I know your brother's getting schoolwork. And I just want to say to the parents out there that are listening, you know, it's 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 tough times, you know, f- for all of us. One, economically. Um, two, uh, um, we have the teachers uh, um, who are sending us stuff. And we're now trying to juggle maybe remotely working, caring for our kids and kids and keeping them entertained, but also learning how to be a teacher. And for the parents out there, you know, I sympathize. It's, it's a challenging time. Um, you know what, we, we, together, we're all going to get through this. Um, you know, the worldwide, we've seen far worse. And uh, just in this little couple of weeks, months in our, in our human history here, uh, we're going to get through this all together. And it, I think a big shout out to the healthcare workers throughout the world, eh? Yeah. We have we know some nurses and we know some doctors, um, and there's just a lot of people out there who are caring for people. They're in self isolation themselves, not spending time with their family, so they can be in hospitals and helping the sick all throughout the world. And you know, we just a big thank you to these people. These people are heroes, right? Um, a hero is somebody that will put others before themselves, and I think that is the definition of it. Um, w- when we look at these people, they are serving all of us. And I think the least thing we can do for them is stay home. Yeah. Yeah, just stay home. And also to those people, because on the news today, there's this girl who's playing the violin for her grandmother, so her grandma, even though the place was in uh, isolation, nobody could go Mm -hmm. in. She was outside and she had her violin. She had a speaker and she was playing the violin for all the people there. Yeah, that's so nice, right? Mm -hmm. We got great technology, just like doing a podcast there. We can touch base with our grandparents and our other loved ones that are far away to, to keep them safe, but also keep connected with them. Yeah. Yeah. Any words for the kids out there, Regan? Maybe while they're home alone or home, not, not in school? Yes. Obey your parents, listen to everything they say, and have fun. Have fun. Okay, so that that's great. Unscripted. Love that, Regan. I would just add a, a little thing for the kids is just give your parents a hug because they need it sometimes. Hug. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. All right, so Regan, now it's time for our Walt's Wisdom segment uh, where we take a Disney quote and talk about it. Uh, what it means and how we are going to apply it. Yes. So uh, I guess I'll go first, Regan. Yeah. Okay, so my quote is um, the foundational quote for our podcast and one of Walt Disney's uh, foundational quotes. And it is first think, second believe, third dream, fourth dare. This is the motto of our podcast, and so I thought I would pick it and share it. So I think for us, it's really important that we dream. And for us to dream is we have to first think of that idea, whatever it is. So for the kids and the parents, I want you to think of an idea that would really make your heart warm. And I want you to believe in that idea. Okay, so you've thought of that idea. I want you to believe in that idea. Now I want you to dream how you're going to make that happen. And lastly... I dare you to do it. Take that step, okay? Us, we're doing a podcast. We never thought we would do this. Yeah. And we're doing it, and we're learning. And we went through all those stages to get where we are today is to provide this for you. And I know we're in tough times right now in the world, but I want you to think, and I definitely want you to believe. And I want you to dream, and I want you to d- dare. Okay, and that that's my quote. Okay. What's yours? My quote is, laughter is kindness, imagination has no age, and dreams are forever. That's a great quote, Regan. So tell me, how, why, what does it mean to you? 
Well, I thought it kind of um, tags in with our motto, think, believe, dream, and dare. So, uh, because dreams are forever, and you have to imagine your dream, and then laughter, when you have laughter, you always make someone feel better. That's great. I love the quote. You know, I was looking at that quote too. It's a great quote, Regan. And you know what? Laughter is timeless, and it, it's it's something that we need in this time. So hopefully, you know, in doing this podcast, we put a smile on your face. I don't know if we're that funny, but we might put a smile. <laughs> well, maybe to some, but we might put a smile on your face. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's uh, that's sort of the main segments here, and we're going to be wrapping up the show momentarily. So stay tuned. Well, Regan, a big first episode of Dishing It, the Daddy and Daughter podcast. Did you have fun? I had loads of fun. Me too. It was awesome. So I think we should sign off from Studio A113. Listeners, you can get all the latest news and updates on Dishing It on Twitter at It Dishin and Facebook at Dishing It Podcast. And as always, we reward listeners who listen to the end. So, Regan, what should the listeners expect in episode two? What about our top three desserts? Yum! I'm all in for that, <laughs> yes. Uh, listeners can also expect us to talk about the food at and the Disney meal plans. So we will provide some comprehensive advice on the Disney meal plan as it is currently in play today. So, um, as we wrap it up i want to say a big thank you to mrs h for allowing us to record this podcast thank you to kevin mcleod for the great music thank you to the listeners we hope you enjoy listening to dishing it the daughter and daddy podcast please remember to think believe dream and dare goodbye Goodbye, family regan regan Remember the extra magic minute? Yes, that's about Disney Easter eggs. Oh, that's why we're whispering at the end of the podcast. So, what Disney Easter egg do you have for the listeners who didn't end the Dishing It podcast yet? A Disney Easter egg is A113. That is our broadcast studio. It is an inside joke created by the students at California Institute of Arts, referring to the classroom used by graphic designs and character animation studios, including John Lasseter, Tim Burton, and Brad Bird. Bird used the first license plate number in the Family Dog episode of Amazing Stories. It appears in other Disney movies and even Pixar movies. Great Easter egg, Regan. So listeners, look out for A113 in all those Pixar Pixar movies and see if you can spot it in other places. If you do, shoot us an email. Bye. Bye.